Hey guys, it's Halion again, and we're back one more time to cover the last weapon in our series of weapon guides, and this one's going to be all about the Advent Rail. If you have questions about the other weapons, make sure you check out my YouTube channel for the other videos that I have on those. So how this video is going to go is I'm going to cover the basics behind the rail, maybe a couple of secret techniques and things like that. Then we're going to go going to go over each aspect. And then after that, we're going to go through every single hammer that is available on the rail. Then I'm going to cover some basic boon combinations that might work well with it. As always, this is just my opinion. And just because I don't like something doesn't necessarily mean it's bad or that you shouldn't use it. In fact, I always encourage you to explore and experiment with new things in this game. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you want to get more Hades and other game content from me. All right, guys, let's do it one more time. All right, before we dive into the actual aspects, I'm just going to cover some of the basics behind the rail here. And there's not a whole lot to know. There is a reload mechanic with the rail because it's a gun after all. So you fire the weapon using the attack button here. And then when you run out of ammo, Zag will clink continuously until you let go of the attack button, at which point he will reload it himself. So there is a bit of uh, skill, skill that you need to have here to be able to reload yourself or at the very least know when to let go of the attack button. The default controller bind to reload is actually R3, which means pressing down on the right joystick. And I really, really recommend rebinding that to something else. I use left trigger personally, and I really highly recommend using that or another button that's a little more easily acceptable, something where you don't have to move your thumb away from the key buttons there. So while you could just let Zag reload himself, I really recommend trying to get in the habit of reloading yourself when you're down to one or two pieces of ammo or zero if, if you're very good at the game and being able to reload consistently because that way you can just be more efficient with dealing at your damage. Now, the, one of the big things to note with the attack on the rail is that it does not stagger enemies, which means that while you're shooting, you have to stand still. This means foes can still be coming towards you and they could still attack you even while you're in the middle of firing. So what you kind of have to do is play a song and dance where you're attacking and dashing continuously. You can let the aim assist do a lot of the work for you here if you're using a controller. The dash strike with the rail just means that you fire two bullets quickly at once with it. So it's nothing too fancy with that, but it is kind of nice to utilize if you're able to. There are certain hammers that can really make this shine a little bit more that we'll go over into more detail too. Now the special can change dramatically based on the hammers that you have here, but this is going to be the default special move that we have here with this big explosion that comes down in a kind of a slow arc over at enemies. Now if there is anything in the way, it is possible that the special will re-traject in a change where it's going to land after a few moments here. If you try to put it up against a wall, it's just going to bounce right back and go somewhere else and you'll get to see the circle change its location. All right, guys, so now we're going to go over the aspects for the rail, and we're going to start with the aspect of Zagreus, which just gives you a bonus ammo capacity of 12. This, much like many of the other aspects of Zagreus, not very exciting to utilize, but it's actually not so bad. Uh, plus 12 at max Titan blood spent on it is pretty nice when it comes to the ammo reloading mechanic. It just kind of makes things a little bit easier for you, especially when you're still getting used to the rail here. It's only five Titans blood to max it out, so it's not much we can really complain about. It does have a little bit of anti-synergy with namely one uh, hammer upgrade that I'll go over, but... Uh, Aspect of Zagreus really shines mostly with one particular hammer that I can think of. Now, once you've maxed out Titan Blood with all the Aspects, or at least close to it, there's not going to be a lot of instances where you're going to want to take Aspect to Zagreus, and that just really comes down to how powerful Aspect of Eris is. Aspect of Eris is incredibly powerful, especially right now in the game. So for 8 seconds after absorbing your Specialist Blast, you deal more damage. That's 75% at max so the, what it means by absorbing is you throw out the special and as long as you're in the explosion when it goes off you're going to see Zagreus get this little lightning effect around him and that lasts for eight seconds in the realm of Hades eight seconds is kind of a long time and it's pretty easy to keep that buff going as long as you kind of have a focus on it and 75 percent damage is a lot that is a lot of damage and it's not just to your attack it's not just to your special it's not just to your cast it's to your doom damage, your lightning damage, your everything, essentially. It is every aspect of your damage. The only real uh, exclusion to that is your companion keepsake, but this is just so powerful. It's really crazy. Your revenge boons deal more damage. 
Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it goes on and on, really. And any sort of global modifier to your damage is incredibly powerful. I think you just have to keep in mind. So what you'd really want to do with this aspect is just make sure you keep that buff going. And then after that, you can actually either focus on an attack build or you can focus on a special build. It's really versatile. And I think that's what's so cool about Aspect of Eris is because you're not dependent on seeing certain sets of hammers because almost all of them work with it. It's really kind of crazy just how good it is. We're going to go over some powerful boon combos with it later, but I really want to drive home just how good Aspect of Eris is. And just let you know, this is like a really easy aspect to get into either speed running or some very high heat clears, talking 32 plus there. So go ahead and check it out. Next up, we have Aspect of Hestia. After you manually reload, your next shot is empowered. The base damage is 150. So manually reload means you have to hit the reload button. So you can't let Zagreus reload himself. Once you when you manually hit the reload button, you're gonna see this purple glowy effect on the rail here, and the next shot's gonna deal significantly more damage. This is actually a really powerful aspect here. And the only downside to it is that it's sort of a narrow play style, in that you're not really gonna play it any differently other than attack, reload, attack, reload, attack, reload, attack, reload. Um, it's a little unfortunate just because I do think it's a lot of fun. It's very powerful. You can you can do some very, very high heat clears with it fairly safely just because you have a very, very long range with it, as you can see here. And as always, it's really nice to see just a lot of big, chunky numbers, as you can imagine. There are definitely some ways to get some supplemental damage with it, and so you can get that from either amping up your attack with a couple of specific hammers, or you can get some special hammer, special related hammers to uh, get some more damage from that way too. Last is Aspect of Lucifer. You have Igneous Eden, which launches Volatile Hellfire. Hellfire Blast Damage 100. So the Hellfire it's talking about is from your special. So the special changes a little bit with Lucifer here in that you drop this big orb that emanates this energy here. So that energy is going to deal damage on its own every time it it goes. It's not a lot of damage from the radiation that it emits there, but you can actually blow up the ball and deal significant chunks of damage that way. Once I actually am able to there. So the base damage is going to be 100, but a 100 da base damage is a lot, especially if you throw a boon on that special. And as you can see, the attack is very different too. It is this ray beam instead uh, of uh, the normal bullets here. Now, Aspect of Lucifer is a bit more dangerous than the others uh, on the rail because it takes a very long time to actually get the attack going. It has this big wind-up effect. I, I call it big, but maybe it's not as big as, I, as I'm saying here, but it does take a moment to actually get the attack going here. It doesn't just start firing again as soon as you hit the attack button each time, and it does still require reloading every now and then. There are a bunch of cool hammers to, comp to pair with this aspect, though, and I think it's actually one of the more fun aspects that we have. All right, guys, so we got the wiki pulled up on the right here to show us every single hammer that's offered with the rail. Now, before I get started on the hammers, I know I normally cover the boons a little bit later, but I do feel like I have to bring up the fact that the Zeus attack boon is incredibly powerful with almost all the aspects here and almost every single hammer on the rail here as well, just because it's going to be important for the context of a lot of these hammers. So Zeus attack just works really well with anything that rapidly hits, which means that Zag aspect, Eris aspect, Lucat, Lucifer aspect are really powerful whenever it's put on there. All right, so first off, we're going to cover Flurry Fire here. Your attack is faster and more accurate, and you gain six more ammo capacity. This is a pretty nice hammer. It's definitely not bad. Uh, the only thing it suffers from is there's definitely a couple others that just are straight up better than it uh, that we'll go over a little bit later on, I'd say if you get both of them offered at the same time, I think. Um, it's the only one that's actually going to increase your fire rate here, though, so that's kind of interesting to think about. It actually works pretty well with Aspect of Zag and Eris here. It can't be offered with Lucifer, but that's fine, I think, and you probably wouldn't want it with Hestia since you're going to be reloading all the time anyway. But it's a kind of a nice middle-of-the-road pick. There are a lot more that hammers that kind of do a bit more than it, so I don't find myself taking it super often, but it's not so bad. All right, next is Spread Fire. Your attack becomes a short spread that deals 40 base damage, but you lose 6 ammo capacity. That means if you're using Eris or Hestia Aspect, they only have 6 ammo. 
and you can't actually get a second hammer that increases your ammo capacity because flurry fire and another one delta chamber is not compatible with it so you're going to be stuck with six ammo if you're using those two aspects so that's why Zag Aspect is going to be best if you see Spreadfire offered. It's just unfortunate because Spreadfire does a very specific thing, and unless you're using Zag Aspect, you probably don't want it, I'm going to say. And it's also the fact that you don't actually want to use Zeus's attack with it, and instead you're going to want an attack percent base boon, because that's some decent base damage. It's also important to note that with Spreadfire, your dash attacks actually become super powerful, because like I said, when you dash attack with the rail, you actually fire off two shots at once. Two shots at 40 base damage, then you have an attack boon, maybe you can get some dash attack boons. It's crazy powerful, actually. It is definitely a glass cannon kind of build, because you have to get up close. Your attacks don't stagger enemies still, but you're dealing out tons of damage. This, has to, this actually used to be the go-to build for speedrunning for quite a while. It is quite powerful. The spread is a bit narrower than it used to be, so while I think it's fun and everyone should try it at least a few times out, I'd say, unfortunately, it's kind of difficult to plan to get or to plan to use because it's so different from how you'd be playing the rail otherwise. Nevertheless, still a lot of fun, still amazing if you get all the right tools to go with it, but otherwise, I'd just take something else. All right, next we got Explosive Fire. Your attack deals damage in an area and briefly slows foes. This is a hammer that I've actually grown to like a little bit less over time, mostly just because I feel like there's so many other powerful hammers with the rail instead. So you have a little AoE effect wherever your shots actually land, which is kind of nice. And the briefly slows foes is kind of hard to measure. Basically, it's almost like a super mini knockback when you're hitting enemies, almost as if you're kind of hitting them with a tiny bit of Poseidon attack there, really, except they're not actually getting knocked back. They're just staggering them. A tiny bit. They're not actually staggered as in they can't attack, they just aren't moving as quickly, and that's important to note. So it doesn't mean you're going to interrupt the enemy that's attacking you, it's just going to make them do it a little bit more slowly. So while I think it's not a bad hammer, it's just that there's a lot of other really good ones, I think. It's still kind of middle, you know, B, maybe C tier at this point, I think, but never bad to take. Next we got Delta Chamber. Your attack is a three round burst, and you never have to reload. This is a hammer that I used to consider to actually be a downgrade a lot of the time, as long as you're used to actually reloading occasionally. But nowadays, I think it's actually quite powerful. I think there was a change when 1.0 got released of the game, where when you dash attack, it kind of resets that three round burst and it gets to happen a little bit more quickly. It used to be that it felt like there was a large space of time in between each of those three round bursts, where you actually wound up losing overall damage per second there. But now I think it's actually a really powerful hammer. And on top of that, it's just really convenient, right? Never having to reload, never having to think about reloading. It kind of just takes your mind off it. It makes the rail a little bit easier to play. And it makes your movement a lot easier too. This is actually one of the better picks, I think, especially for Aspect of uh, Eris more than anything. It's kind of unfortunate if you end up taking the aspect of Zagreus just because you, you're wasting the the actual aspect there. Um, but still, it's not a bad hammer, so it's not so bad. It's not going to do much for aspect of Hestia, and it can't be offered with Lucifer, I'm afraid, because Lucifer's got a different hammer upgrade that make, gives it infinite ammo. But like I said, pretty good hammer. I'd probably give it a B, maybe even an A with Eris here, actually. Next, we have Piercing Fire. Your attack pierces foes and deals plus 50% damage to armor. Plus 50% damage to armor, not very meaningful, but this is probably one of the better hammers for Aspect of Hestia. It's going to be one of probably only two that you're really going to be seeking out there. So whenever anything has piercing, it means it does go through shields. So the shield guys in Elysium or Theseus, you don't have to worry about them if you take piercing fire. So that's really nice. And with Hestia, that empowered shot being able to pierce enemies instead of stopping on the first one is always going to be good. Because I think one of the struggles with Aspect of Hestia is going to be hitting enemies quickly or being able to hit multiple enemies at once, which is definitely a problem normally. So Piercing Fire can help a lot with that. It's kind of okay with the other aspects, namely Zag and Eris, of course, but I wouldn't call it super good. It's namely going to be for Hestia, and it's definitely going to be top tier for Hestia, but kind of middle of the road for the other two. Next, we have Triple Bomb. You can use your special three times in rapid succession. This is a really fun hammer, and it works with all four of the aspects. I think I'm going to say it works best with, best with Aspect of Lucifer, though, because being able to drop 
three of those radiating bombs really quickly is actually really awesome with it. And not only that, you can make all three explode at once. And that way you can actually get ready for a boss to come out of an invulnerability phase with having all three laid out right in front of them and boom, make them all explode, explode and deal a ton of damage that way. It's a pretty nice hammer. I do think there are some better special hammers with the other aspects, especially with aspects of Harris, but it's not definitely not a wrong pick ever. I would take this uh, a lot of the time if the better ones aren't offered. It can't be combined with Cluster Bomb or Hazard Bomb, which you'll see a little bit later, but it works really awesome if you can combine it with Rocket Bomb. So yeah, not a bad pick at all. Speaking of Rocket Bomb, here it is here. Your special is replaced with a rocket that deals 80 base damage. And I know I've talked a lot about base damage in previous videos, but I just got to reiterate 80 base damage is a lot. That is a lot of damage. This is an S tier upgrade for every one of these aspects, I'm going to say. just It's just a nice mix up. A lot of these are based around using your attack a lot, a lot of these aspects. But being able to just fire off one quick rocket that deals a ton of damage in one shot is really powerful. This works really well with Aspect of Eris, and I definitely get the question a lot of how it works, and the answer is you just have to be near the explosion when it goes off to still get that buff with Eris Aspect. I think one of the best parts about Rocket Bomb is there's a ton of cool combinations you can get with it, namely Cluster Bomb plus Rocket Bomb, and that is just insane. It is basically a five rocket spread right in front of you. If you got, a, if you have an enemy with a big enough hitbox in front of you, you can actually get all five to hit them, and it deals a ton of damage. It's just insane that that combo even exists, honestly. Rocket Bomb just pairs so well with so many other hammers that it's really never wrong to take it, and it works with every aspect. Unfortunately, you can't get it with the aspect of Lucifer, but the other three, it just works so amazingly well. S tier all the way. Next, we have targeting system. Foes targeted by your special move slower and take 30% more damage. So targeting system is actually a really, really good hammer for all of the aspects, I'm going to say. So plus 30% damage is the important part here. And that again, that is kind of like how I was uh, amplifying the fact that the global damage from Eris is important. That 30% is also global damage. And by the way, targeting system's damage bonus also uh, means your companion keeps taking damage which means that Meg's 2,500 damage gets amplified by 30% more. That's crazy, really. Targeting system just works really well. It's compatible with everything. It doesn't have any exclusions from other hammers. It's just never wrong to take it. I might actually call it an S-tier pick too, except that it's just not uh, very fun or exciting to use compared to some other ones just because it's a bit more of a uh, bland effect, but it still works really well. It's just not as exciting to take, but still top tier in terms of damage output. Next, we have Hazard Bomb. Your special deals plus 300% base damage in a large area, but can hurt you. So this is one of the funnier ones, and it uh, it's, it's not a terrible hammer, honestly. It's kind of interesting how you can get it to work. It's fun is the main thing I'd say. It's fun, it's cool, it deals a ton of damage to enemies, uh, but it hurts you, right? So it's not really good to take with errors still, I'm gonna say, because that means you kind of have to hurt yourself to get the bonus damage. A lot of people out there are gonna tell you that, oh, you can dash out at the last couple of frames and still get the bonus damage buff, but forget that stuff. Like weird tricks like that it's not worth thinking about it's a funny pick to take it's not compatible with a lot of other hammers i would take it just to try it out honestly but i wouldn't uh count on it for winning you your first game or anything like that but again lots of fun try it out let me know what you think next we have cluster bomb your special fires a spread of five bombs but each deals 30 percent less damage so uh spread of five bombs and by the way you can actually make all those bombs uh, kind of land in the same spot. Thus, you can actually get all five to land on the same target if you can time it correctly. This is definitely one of the more difficult hammers to use well, but when you can use it well, it is top tier. It is insane amounts of damage. Not to mention you can combine this with a lot of really cool other hammers and make it deal even more damage like I was talking about with Rocket Bomb there. It's really quite crazy. This is actually one of the times where uh, playing with mouse and keyboard kind of shines a little bit more because you can actually aim your special a little bit more easily versus the controller. Because what you a lot of times what you want to do is you want to force the bombs to land really close to Zagreus and doing that with the controller can actually be a little clunky, but you can actually achieve it. 
Really great hammer upgrade. Works well with everything here for sure. Can't be gotten with Aspect of Lucifer, but it works really well with all three of the other ones. Never a bad take. So you might have noticed that Concentrated Fire is listed on the wiki to our right here, but actually that hammer upgrade got scrapped from the game a while ago and just is still lingering. I just wanted to let you guys know I wasn't skipping one on purpose here. Next we have Seeking Fire, your attack seeks the nearest foe and deals plus 10% damage. So Seeking Fire is actually one of the lower picks I think for me when I play with the rail. Uh, the big thing here is that that plus 10% damage, A, it's kind of not a big uh, damage bonus there, and B, that 10% damage only affects the physical damage of the rail, so it's not going to help in case you're using Dionysus or Zeus or Ares on the attack, and especially with the case of Zeus, that makes it not very great, I gotta say. When you're using aim assist in the game, like almost everyone is, there's kind of not a huge point to Seeking Fire. It's not bad, I'd say, but there's just too many other good hammer upgrades for me to want to take this very often. All right, for the last hammers here, these are all exclusive to Aspect of Lucifer, and it's kind of cool that they made some extra hammer upgrades for Aspect of Lucifer, because for all the other legendary aspects, they all only got one hammer, unfortunately, but Lucifer has got four of them, so that's awesome. I'm really glad they put through the extra effort here with Lucifer. So first on the list is Concentrated Beam, your Igneous unit attack damage to a foe ramps up 100% faster. So the ramp damage from Aspect of Lucifer is actually really powerful. It actually ends up dealing a lot of damage. So even if you're using Zeus, which doesn't amplify your physical damage, it instead just has its own set of damage, uh, that physical damage is still going to deal a lot from the concentration. So that means you want to hold down the attack button a lot if you're using Concentrated Beam or if you're using Aspect of Lucifer at all because you don't really want to let go and lose up that ramped up damage from it. Now the only problem is, I feel like Concentrated Beam, when I've used it, I haven't really been able to notice much of a difference in the damage output. I've tried to make the aspect of Lucifer work well with something like Artemis on the attack, and I just couldn't get it to perform, it seemed. I always end up regretting taking Concentrated Beam, but maybe I just haven't experimented enough with it, and maybe you guys could let me know what you think. Next up we have Flash Fire, your Igneous Eden attack starts firing and fires 50% faster with plus 15% range. This is definitely one of the better uh, hammer upgrades for Lucifer here. Being able to f start up that fire rate 50% faster is uh, just really important there. That way you don't really have to worry about so much downtime if you have to let go of the attack. This is probably the best uh, hammer upgrade for Lucifer a lot of the time here. It definitely works really, really well uh, just to get that damage going really fast. Probably a, maybe even S tier for Lucifer. Next is Triple Beam. Your Igneous Eden attack fires three beams in a spread pattern. It's not too dissimilar to Triple Shot on the bow in terms of the spread there. The only difference here is that even if you got two or three beams uh, focused on the same enemy by getting up really close, you don't ex get extra damage from it. So Triple Beam is really only for crowd control, where you're hoping to hit multiple enemies with those extra beams. Because of that, I don't really consider it a great hammer upgrade with Lucifer, but it's not bad. You might get some inconsequential damage there, but it's uh, not amazing. I'd probably wind up taking either Piercing Fire or Flash Fire a lot here instead. Now, I actually miscounted. Lucifer actually has five of its own hammer upgrades, not four, like I said earlier. And the next one is Eternal Chamber. Your Igneous Eden has infinite ammo, but its damage no longer ramps. And no longer ramps is really painful, I think, here. So you might think this will work really well with, let's say, Zeus on the attack with Lucifer, and it works okay. It's just kind of too bad because I think that ramp damage is kind of important, especially against uh, big single target enemies. I would say Eternal Chamber, not amazing here, honestly. I'd probably just rather have to reload every now and then. Not to mention, sometimes you just need to stop attacking anyway to avoid getting hit or because you're really far away from enemies, so it's not really such a big downside to have to reload every now and then. So I would call it not great. I'd probably rather take another hammer most of the time. Alright, last on the list is Greater Inferno. Your Igneous Eden Hellfire radiates 250% more damage in an even larger area. This is just a fun one, I'd say. It's actually not bad for uh, Aspect of Lucifer. If you have, if you already have a solid special boon when using Lucifer and you see this hammer up uh, offered, it's definitely not a bad take. I think when you're using Lucifer, you really have to mix up 
the aspect when you're playing it and throw out those specials whenever you're reloading or maybe when you just get an opportunity and deal some uh, extra damage that way. So I think this is a pretty good pick and it's really cool to see those bigger radiating effects and the extra damage is really nice too. All right, guys, that does it for the hammer upgrades on the rail. And next, I'm just going to bring up some boons on the right side and go through every aspect again one more time really quickly here. So first up is aspect of Zag. And like with every single one of these, and like I mentioned earlier, it is never wrong to take Zeus except with aspect of Hestia. I'm probably just going to leave that boon up here the whole time just because it is the sort of crutch to a lot of uh, rail play here. It might make you think that using the rail is kind of boring then since you kind of like this one particular boon but even with aspect to zag there are definitely some other ones that work pretty well here dionysus is fine i'd say even aries doom actually works really well and those are probably going to be my top picks for aspect to zagreus now if you're able to get that spread fighter hammer i was talking about you definitely want those percentage based boons talking mostly about Artemis, Aphrodite, Athena, and Demeter. Those are just going to work super well with it. All right, Aspect of Eris, and this is the one I'm really excited about because it just works so well with everything. As always, I recommend trying it out with Zeus on the attack, but try out Dionysus on the attack tier too. I think that this is where Dionysus can shine a lot because that 75% damage bonus does affect the hangover from Dionysus. The other great thing about Aspect of Eris is that you can actually kind of focus in on a special build a bit more utilizing some of those hammers that we talked about. And you definitely want a percentage base boon on your special, talking about Artemis, Athena, Aphrodite, or Demeter. And even Poseidon could work well here in uh, Aspect of Eris with the special, I think, too. Getting any one of those gods and getting one of those powerful hammers can net a lot of damage for you here, for sure. Aspect of Eris is definitely another place where you can actually shine with more dash damage, too. So Splash Dash deals insane damage when you have Aspect of Eris, because that's going to get affected by your bonus damage, too. And then you can segue that into Sea Storm, and it's just really nuts what you can do with it. It's really cool what Aspect of Eris can do here, I think. And so you just want every little bit of damage. You can get some nice call boons from either Dionysus or maybe Poseidon too, and get a lot more damage in that way and take use of that bonus effect. All right, next is Aspect of Estia, and this is where things kind of change for the rail because you really just want a percentage boon on the attack, and then after that, it kind of doesn't matter a whole lot. Artemis obviously works really well, but Athena, Aphrodite, and Demeter all work just fine on the attack. And you really just want to attack, reload, attack, reload, attack, reload. If you wind up with a hammer that affects your special, you're probably going to want a percentage boon on the special there too, just like the other gods that we mentioned. But besides that, it's not really anything in particular you're going to be looking for uh, with Hestia, I think. Lastly, for Lucifer, another time where Zeus works really quite fine on the attack here, I'd say, and uh, a big percentage boon on the special definitely works really, really well here. You get those big, chunky bomb hits, I think. Uh, if you end up taking something like Concentrated Beam Hammer, you can try a, a physical god, uh, like the ones we mentioned, Artemis, Aphrodite, Athena, and Demeter, but I haven't been able to make that work really well myself. Even Dionysus actually works pretty well on the attack uh, with Lucifer. And one of the more fun things that we all like to do in the speedrun community is put Poseidon on the attack. And then you just pray that you get the Sea Storm duo boon with Zeus there too. And then that way you can actually deal quite a bit of damage that way. It's a bit silly knocking back your foes and trying to chase them down with a hose here. But it's definitely a lot of fun. All right, guys, that is the end of our rail guide for today, and it actually wraps up all of our weapon guides that I had planned for YouTube here. But I got lots more guides planned for Hades here with lots of information still to give out. So make sure you stay tuned for those. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more com more content from me. And I just want to leave you with a little segment from our stream that wasn't able to make it to YouTube, but I thought you guys might enjoy. All right, guys, have fun, and I'll see you later. Um, so I've prepared a story for us for today. Okay. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. You know, it's from my past. Uh, but it was, it was an important time for me, uh, basically. So I was visiting a friend several years ago who had gotten a new pet snake, very excited about him. Let's call him Pepe. Uh, my friend, not the snake. I don't remember the name of the snake. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pepe. Uh, anyway, he brought the snake out while we were sipping on some, you know, 7-Eleven Big Gulps. And he's trying to show off all the snake-like features. Um, and eventually Pepe convinces me 
you hold the snake, <clears throat> and uh, and it just immediately bites right into my arm. No, absolutely no delay. Put it into my hands, chomp. Just immediate chomp right into my arm. And uh, whew, oh boy, it did, it did not feel good. It bit so hard that I could really feel it like in my, my bone, my uh, fucking tibula or whatever. Carlos, you can tell me what that is. Um, and freaking Pepe just stands there as this thing is lashed onto my arm and goes, whoa. We both sit there on his dirty sofa, staring at the snake that has now become a parasite to my body for a few, for a few moments. After a while, Pepe manages to pull the snake's teeth out of my arm and put it back in its cage. Pepe then tells me that his serpent is venomous and that I might need medical attention. As doubtful as I am of... Uh, Pepe's knowledge of his pet snake, I feel like I pretty much have to believe him and uh, just play it safe uh, for, for this sake. So we race to the emergency room. His 1989 Buick LeSabre with dirty cushions. At one point in the ride, he convinces me that I should be trying to suck the venom out of my arm. So here I am, slurping at my arm, while Pepe struggles to understand how to navigate a traffic circle. Me just sipping away at these uh, two piercings upon, upon my... Uh, instrument here um when we get to the er i run in as if my shoes are on fire quickly telling the nurse what happened hey man this snake just bit my arm and i think it's venomous blah, blah, blah. The nurse just looks me up and down and just says take a seat honey time passes age becomes only an idea a thought that quickly comes into the mind but vanishes as soon as as it existed I stare at this man in the waiting room holding an ice pack to his foot while he snaps selfies of himself but only when he thinks no one is watching. But I was watching. I'm imagining the caption now for his Instagram post. Just in the ER, lol. His life is as empty as my mouth is of saliva after all of the arm sucking and drooling I had done. The spot on my arm where the serpent had laid its fangs is red and swollen. It burns as if searing magma had penetrated my skin and leaked in onto my flesh. After much time, they call a name. Daniel? They have to call it again before I consider it's for me. Daniel? The nurse guides me into a small vacant room with no windows. A woman quickly walks in, just as I was also, but from the other side. She introduces herself as Dr. Carlos, and without any questions, grabs my arm and begins inspecting. I try to tell her what happened, but she remains completely silent. Her brows were furrowed, and her eyes pointed like daggers straight at my wound. She slapped a bandage on it after a couple moments and exclaims, stay hydrated. That was the end of our interaction. Full of embarrassment and perhaps some shame, I slowly saunter my, back, my way back out to the parking lot. Pepe is waiting for me in the Lesaber, his car seat fully reclined. He's reading the back of a bag of Funyuns, having a really joyous time, I think. I step into the passenger seat and Pepe says, What happened, man? I tell Pepe, Well, I guess you could say I really learned something today. The end. <laughs>